getting up to speed with StreamYard, this is the series for you. We're gonna cover all functions and features in the platform, but in this video, we're gonna take a look at the studio. Probably gonna have to break this into two pieces, but we'll look at all the tabs, the settings, and we'll even go live. Let's dive in. The first thing to do is to enter the studio. Here is the dashboard. I'm going to go into reusable studios another time. Right now, we're gonna go into one of our test studios and you can see those on screen right here. I'm gonna click on enter studio and it brings up this screen loading. Let's set up your studio. You can mute your mic, unmute your mic, stop your camera, go to the settings screen, which is where I do want you to go just to verify you have the right camera selected. So if I did want to get my BTS camera, I can switch to that. If I want my top down camera, I can switch to that. Uh, or if I want to utilize the camera that you saw originally, which is the camera behind my other camera, I can switch to that. Um, also, you can change your resolution here. You can mirror your camera in case you want to see it like this, right? Look, <laughs> if you have an overlay that, that covers a lot of the screen, you might cover yourself. So keep that in mind. It gives you this little warning when you do that. You also have the touch up appearance option uh, to be able to kind of, you know, give yourself a little bit of, of butter, as they say. Uh, but then also you can change your audio, right? So I have a number of audio interfaces. This is a uh, loopback microphone that you're seeing me use right now. But um, Rodecaster Pro is here. Um, the webcam is here. Zoom audio device is here. There's Blackmagic devices here. The Insta360 link is here. All of those are audio inputs that I could select if I wanted to, but I'm going to keep it at the mic that I want. You can determine whether you want echo cancellation on, whether you want to reduce background noise. And some people are confused as to what what is the difference between the two. Echo cancellation is it's it's looking for another voice or a a repeated version of your own voice. Let's say, you know, somebody you have in your studio and you are wanting to listen in your speakers like right now i don't have on headphones if i had a guest this the audio from my guest would be coming through the speakers but it could potentially be picked up by the microphone so echo cancellation is essentially just removing that echo that is potentially possible because you have an open microphone and you're listening in your speakers so that's what echo cancellation is really for whereas noise background noise is going to reduce background noise, just exactly what it says. Maybe there's a hum in your room. My fan makes a lot of noise that's above me. Um, sometimes maybe somebody might be cutting the yard, lawn outside. There's a number of reasons why you might want to utilize reduce mic background noise, which would be a separate function from um, echo cancellation. So keep that in mind as well. Another the, the other thing to keep in mind here is, of course, you do have stereo audio. You have to uncheck echo cancellation to even have this as an option. And then even here, you have the ability to uh, adjust your gain. A lot of people don't know that this is where you do it. If you have it set automatically, that's going to uh, basically give you a great baseline. And for most people, that's fine. But if you do want to turn your gain up, your mic, you want to turn it up, you uncheck this box and you can pull this up. And I'll show you where how to get to these settings inside the studio as well. You've got virtual background here as well. And for many, I know that that's a thing. I don't use virtual backgrounds, but I just want to showcase where it is. Um, under general, you, so you can select your orientation, landscape or portrait. You can select the resolution for the entire stream and you can also select light and dark mode. Uh, some other options that are there as well, but I, I will get into those as we get into the studio. Now we're in the studio and um, we are under a a blank theme. I've, I've tried to kind of make this as, as close to what you guys will see as possible. So I'm going to go to this blank theme, right? So this is the, a blank uh, profile, or I should say brand. So under your media assets, 
you have this list of brands and brands I would like to call shows. Remember, this is this is this is understanding the studio, y'all. We're understanding the studio. And so brands is what I like to call shows. So in a particular show, I might have an intro, outro, I've got overlays, I've got lower thirds, I've got um, banners and tickers and different things that are specific to a particular show. These are reusable assets that I uh, will want to touch every single time. And so having them under a brand gives me that functionality in one place, all of those things in one place. So what does that look like? Um, we're let's let's right here under media assets. We're under this blank brand and you'll see not meant there's just the default uh, video clips, the default backgrounds, the default overlays. But if I change to my brand, which I, I call default, unfortunately, uh, I have a number of overlays that I can choose from. These are overlays that I use regularly. I have a number of videos that I can choose from as well. It looks familiar. Um, the t-shirt video, I have a number of things that I can utilize. And then I also have other backgrounds as well, up to and including the one that we're looking at right now. So being able to switch between brands, AKA shows is clutch, uh, to be able to just come into the studio after it's all been set up and configured, select let's talk money, which is an, a client show that I do and boom, everything is already ready to go. I've got all my assets, all the videos, the, 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 uh, overlays, the different things that I would need for that particular show. Everything is there tied to the brand that I'm in. Now I'm going to go back to the blank brand and I'm going to go back to the top option. This is what you, what it looks like when you first come in comments is right here, right? We're just going to go through all of these icons on the right extreme right side of your, your, your screen. I call them tabs. Um, I don't know what other way to describe them, but so your comments tab is first. And for most people, when you're doing a live show, this is where you'll live. This is where you'll put your comments on screen. Keep in mind, however, that if you want to change the look and feel of that comment, you you want to go down to style while the comment is up. You go to style and you can go to classic you can go to minimal. You can go to block and you will see that comment change. You can also change your brand color right here and the uh, accents for the different colors that are going to be in use will be there um, on screen in that instance. Um, one thing I, I think I may have made it change to portrait. Let me go to landscape here. Good, 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 good. Let's go to this. Let's go to that. All right. Yeah. So I'm putting my, my camera on screen. I'm when I probably need to show that to you in a little bit, but we've changed the way that the theme, the theme uh, is what controls the way the uh, comments look in addition to comments, right? Let's go back to comments to take that comments off. We go to banners. And again, I've got a number of banners here and whichever banner you're going to use is going to be specific to your show, but your banners don't change based on the brand. So you would have to actually create folders for each of your shows um, to correspond with your brand. So uh, the, the, the brand that I was in earlier is this one. Let's talk money. I've got this ticker here and maybe I've got this lower third as well. If I go back to style again, if I change the way that, you know, the theme that I'm using, you'll see that the ticker, the lower third, I should say the banner and the ticker both change depending on which one I'm selecting. So your banner, your, your style theme and brand color has impact on whatever we're seeing from both comments and banners. So I'm going to take those off. We'll go back and you'll see, I just have a folder full of uh, banners and they also have tickers. Several people ask me, can you, can you have the ticker go uh, the other way? And the answer is no. You have one direction uh, for your ticker. You have one direction for your ticker and that's pretty much it. So that's something to, to keep in mind as well. Right. So banners, so comments and banners, we've, we've completed those. I'm going to skip over media assets because that's the largest one. I'm going to go down to recording. 
and recording is if you are doing a recording uh, for, you know, instead of it being a live show, you're doing a recording. I kind of talked about this in our previous video, which was understanding the dashboard. And if you haven't gotten a chance to check that one out, I would highly recommend you do that. This series is meant to be consumed all together, even though we are releasing them one by one. Uh, understanding the dashboard, of course, being first, and we're building on that knowledge now with understanding the studio part one. And so here you would you would be able to record locally, right? If say you have a guest, um, you could record locally uh, to your computer and then have that video uploaded after the video after recording has has completed. And that helps you in terms of bandwidth and different things like that. So that's where your recording options will be. And you can kind of just check in here to see what the status is of the recording. Private chat is, is communication, uh, text communication between you and anybody else that's in the studio. Whatever I type here, somebody else that's in the studio will be able to see that and engage with it as well, even to respond. And if somebody types while you're on another tab, you will get a notification here letting you know that there is um, some a message in there for you. Style is a tab that we've kind of gone to already. You can all decide what the size of your camera is, whether it's a shape, whether it's a square or a circle um, 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 cropped. Uh, you can also decide, you know, kind of some of the 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 um, style uh, groupings that they will put together in terms of the uh, theme and the color. Some of that stuff is can be done with presets here. Uh, again, we touched on brand color and theme. You have display name and headline. I'm going to add my uh, camera to the stage by hitting the add camera here. I've got to, I will get to these later, but you can go to display names, show headlines. All right. So if I hit show headlines, you'll see that there's a sub uh, tagline that comes up here and you can edit that by going to the three dots and just going to edit name and headline and you can change that. But you also get to set that when you enter the studio. So you can turn that on and off right here. Maybe you want both of them off. Totally up to you. You can also change your font. You can decide what font everything is displayed in. You do that right here in style. Um, and you can also set your default camera. So not just here in the presets, you can set your default camera. You can actually round the corners totally up to you. You can kind of dial it in, make it your own, have some fun with the thing. So that's uh, recording private chat in style. Media assets is the largest of the tabs in terms of where a lot of functionality is. This is where you put your logo. This is where you put your overlays. This is where you put your video clips. This is where you put your backgrounds. This is where you can um, play with some background music or sound effects, just depending on how you've uploaded them. And you can see all of that functionality is here. You just hit the plus sign um, to upload a logo. But as I've mentioned before, if you hover over the question mark, it'll give you the parameters, right? 200 by 200 um, PNG or GIF for the logo. <clears throat> And if I click this, you'll see the logo come up on the screen and you can click it to hide it. If you're on a free plan, the StreamYard logo is kind of stuck there, right? So you don't get a chance to take that down. Here is another overlay, a transparent overlay, an example of that. And again, if I wanted to upload one, I would keep, hit the plus sign. But I also can hover over the question mark again to see that I can do um, JPEGs or PNGs. You can do 1280 by 720, but I also know that you can do 1920 by 1080. Uh, the max file size, however, is 20 meg uh, for images over image overlays or um, three meg for GIFs, three meg for GIFs. And so I'm just going to switch my brand real quick so that you can kind of get a chance to see. Um, let's go back here. What it looks like. Uh, yeah, what it looks like in these other brands. So here, uh, you, what, what it looks like with other overlays, not just the default. So this is a full screen overlay, whereas this is just a, a transparent overlay. So just a lower third. Here's one that just has my signature on the top and my website on the bottom. This is again, a full screen. This one has two, right? On in the two places there. Um, this is right here. It's just saying, thank you for watching. This is right in the middle of the screen. And I, I use this whenever I have two cameras on screen, stuff like that. Um, but you, you kind of get an idea of what, what it can look like, um, with overlays 
when you've exported them properly, right? When you when you've added them into the system properly. So let's go back to our blank brand. Uh, so you can you got you kind of get a feel for what overlays look like. We also have the ability to add an intro video and outro video. But before you can add an intro video or outro video, you must first add a video. And so you would just hit the plus sign here to add a video to your to your system. And it would be under this particular brand. Um, I've hovered over the question mark so that we can see what that looks like. 1280 by 720. Again, 1920 by 1080 will work, but you have a max file size of 200 meg for the videos. There are other ways to do uh, videos, but that is more in the other section. So we'll get to some of those in part two of this video. We're already at time for this first portion of understanding the studio. And so you would simply upload your videos here. Again, we'll go back to my default brand and you'll see that we have some videos here that I can play. And if I wanted to, I could go to intro video and select one of these videos to be the intro. And what would that do? What it means is if I, when I uh, go to hit record or when I click to go live, the, this video would be the one to play. And if I go to end my, my video, it will automatically play this video and then end my video for the outro. So again, really cool functionality, uh, something that, uh, the users in the user community of StreamYard have asked for for so, quite some time. Um, and then lastly, we have background music and you have the ability to adjust your volume for the background music. You can decide whether or not you're gonna loop that track and you can even have the fade in and fade out option. So you can, once you select that, music will fade in and fade out. And so if I play this music, this is, it should be playing softly there in the background, but this is uh, standard, or I should say copyright free music that comes with StreamYard. I haven't uploaded any of these, these are defaults. Um, you can hear how it comes into the audio. And when I click it to stop it, it fades out. Um, and then of course the track is set to loop, but if you deselect that, it will not loop. And you can then also adjust the audio level, the, the, the volume level of that track there. So that kind of covers everything on this left side of the screen. And I know, I know that that was a lot, but it, there's still yet plenty of ground to cover. There's still layouts to touch on. There's still scenes to touch on. And we did not even get a chance to go live or look at hotkeys. So hopefully you will join us in the next video where we'll get a chance to look at uh, understanding the StreamYard Studio part two, looking at layout scenes, hotkeys and going live. Grace and peace fam. Hope you enjoyed this. Leave a comment below if you have any questions and we'll see you in the next one.